I agree, make no Melita, and this is my channel, The Midnight Librarian. And today I will be talking about the, uh, me doing, today I will be doing the mid-year book freak out tag. If I sound a little funny, I apologize, my allergies are kind of flaring up today. My eyes are a little watery and I just sneezed a bunch, so bear with me. Um, and of course, my dog is barking. <laughs> so today I'm going to do the uh, mid-year book freakout tag. This is a hugely popular book tag here on BookTube. I think it was originally actually created by a book blogger. Um, but yeah, this is one that I think almost everyone does every year and I, I am no exception to that. Um, I actually do really enjoy it, so uh, it's a great way to kind of review the books uh, that I've read, and yeah, so let's, let's just get into it. Question one is um, the best book you've read so far in 2021, and <laughs> I have a hard time choosing favorites, uh, so I'm going to say three of them. Um, First is The Firekeeper's Daughter by Angeline Bouly. I thought it was very well written. I also thought it was very intense and it made me feel all the emotions and just made it, uh, I ended up listening to an advanced listener's copy through Libro FM, but I did pre-order this. And I, yeah, it was just amazing. And usually with audiobooks, I like to do something with it. Um, I like to keep my hands busy, but this book just had me hooked and like I was just staring out the window the whole time I was reading it because it kept my attention um and I didn't want to do anything else I didn't want to miss a single detail so next I have The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers I really love this book I always thought I was kind of like very hesitant with multi-perspective books however Becky Chambers does a great job in making me feel for all these characters they i didn't think that she'd be able to make me like um sympathize with all of them but she definitely had and yeah i absolutely love it there was a great uh diverse cast of characters that i absolutely loved and and immediately like wanted to dive further into this series and of course my last and probably i think this one is like not to rate them but i think this one's like number one so far and that is Braiding Sweetgrass by Robin Wall Kimmerer. This is a non-fiction book um, about indigenous wisdom, scientific knowledge, and the teaching of plants. It's a collection of essays essentially written not only by Robin Wall Kimmerer but her um, a couple are from her daughters as well. I absolutely love this book. This was something that I, this book came to me a bit ago. It was gifted to me by Neil Yazzie. Uh, who I'll leave down in the description down below, but it was also one that I gravitated towards during a hard time in my life, um, or within this year. <laughs> uh, May very much was a struggle for Indigenous people um, because of the um, bodies of children that were found at residential schools and just everything that ensued after that. This definitely helped in terms of um, just kind of escaping from everything and this is definitely the book that I leaned in on. I loved the atmosphere that Robin Wall Kimmerer brought to this book and despite it being a nonfiction, it was captivating and interesting and just helped me escape and it was definitely like a huge comfort read for me. Question two is the best sequel that you've read so far in 2021. Um, I've only read two sequels <laughs> and I think they're about on the same level for me, so I'll just mention them both. And the first one is going to be A Close and Common Orbit by Becky Chambers. This is the second book in the Wafer series. Um, I've heard some people say they're more or less like companion novels. However, I feel like A Close and Common Orbit um, so closely follows the events of uh, the small the Long Way to a Small Angry Planet that I would suggest reading The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet first if you don't want to be spoiled for A Close and Common Orbit. I have read the synopsis for the third book and it doesn't sound like it's following any of the same characters but I don't quite know yet so we'll see. <laughs> um, but yes, I did read this. Um, we kind of get more... Um, we get more of characters that were introduced in the first book 
um, not necessarily main characters. We get to know more about some side characters uh, that briefly pop up every now and then. Um, we also um, get to learn a bit more about a particular um, station that the Wayfarer stopped at um, to see these characters and it was just, it was really nice. I like to delve more into this uh, world. Um, I don't think it was as good as a, a, a long way to a small angry planet, but I think that's ultimately just how I tend to view things. I like the first book in a series typically because I like that introduction into a world and like figuring out the world um, and tend to fall in love with the characters like that right away as they explore it. Um, so that was one thing with The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet was that we got to explore the space because this was the first time Rosemary Harper was exploring space. Um, she was not a spacer, so she grew up on Mars. So it was very, uh, we got to kind of learn with her and with this one we kind of did the same thing in a way, um, but it was new aspects. So I thought it was still pretty cool. Uh, I don't think it was as strong as The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet, but I still really enjoyed it. The second one was actually a bit of a surprise to me and it may end up coming up later, uh, but that is The Bride Test by Helen Huang. This is the second book uh, in the um, Kiss Quotient series by Helen Wong. This is a, I think so far it's going to be a trilogy um, because the third book is coming out this year. But this one surprised me was mostly because the Kiss Quotient wasn't my favorite. I don't um, tend to enjoy a whole lot of romance just because there's certain tropes that happen that I don't tend to like. There's also just specific things that I would prefer in romance books or some things that, like, I mean, we all have our own turn-ons, right? So, um, and not <laughs> every author is going to know what my particular turn-ons are or likes or dislikes for a romance book. Um, I'm just particularly a little more picky when it comes to romance. And with the Kiss Quotient, it fell short for me. There was tropes in it that I recognized that I didn't enjoy. Um, and the Kiss Quotient, so I was a little hesitant to go into the Kiss Quotient. However, I did really enjoy this. This one was surprising. So these are more like companions in a way. Um, as well because we don't follow the same characters as we do in the Kiss Quotient. They do appear in here as like cameos and know that if you read this without reading the first one that some like I mean the ending essentially will be spoiled for you. Um, I mean though you can kind of guess what happens. The growth in here was really nice not only for Esme but for Kai as well. Um, I felt like the miscommunication thing that tends to happen within romance books was justified in here because of the different um, cultural expectations um, as well as um, the unknowing of what to expect uh, because Esme was coming straight from Vietnam and because Kai is autistic I think there was definitely a barrier that had to, they had to break through and it was just really sweet and really nice and I really felt for Esme. Um, I felt a lot more emotion than I did with the Kiss Quotient, so yeah, I surprisingly really enjoyed this one. Question three is a new release you haven't read yet but want to. Again, I have a couple, of <laughs> two answers for this, the first being Sorrowland by River Solomon. Um, River Solomon wrote, uh, wrote a book I read last year called Into the Deep, I believe. Um, and I really enjoyed it. So when this um, book uh, started popping up, it was definitely on my radar. This was also the group book for the uh, queer blackathon that I unfortunately missed. Um, I there was There's been so much going on, um, but I still hope to be able to get to this. And from what I understand, we are following a pregnant woman who leaves a cult and has twins in the woods as the cult is chasing her. That's all I'm aware of. That's all I really am wanting to be aware of. This cover is absolutely gorgeous. I'm excited to eventually get to this. <laughs> Another one that I feel like is actually kind of an older release that I've been wanting to get to is Last Night at the Telegraph Club by Melinda Lowe. I believe this 
is a kind of love story why is it a YA love story why a historical love story um sapphic love story <laughs> there's so many okay so a why a sapphic uh a YA historical sapphic love story. So this is set in 1954. These two girls are falling in love when it's a bad time for women to be falling in love with other women, let alone one of them being Chinese as the Red Scare is happening in America. So I have been fairly interested in this and hope to read it soon. Question four is the most anticipated release for the second half of the year and I'm so happy to already have this, so thank you to um, Simon & Schuster for sending me an advanced reader's copy of this, but um, for this question, it will be My Heart is a Chainsaw by uh, Stephen Graham Jones. This comes out August 31st of 2021. Uh, well, it's expected to come out around that time. Who knows what happens, what will happen between then and that time um, I already do have a finished copy on pre-order but I am hoping to get to this shortly so that I can put out a full review. Stephen Graham Jones wrote um, The Only Good Indians um, of which several of us read like it became hugely popular last year which we were super excited uh, I was super excited about but I will leave um, all our I'll, yeah, I will leave reviews, um, indigenous reviews of that book down in the description down below as well, as well as my own up here. Um, but this one I feel like is kind of a slasher, um, a take on the slasher movie. Um, and I'll just read you the back. Jade feels like she's trapped in a slasher, slasher film as tourists go missing and, ten and the tension between her community and the celebrity new welcomers to the Indian Lake shore heads towards a tipping point. When she feels the killer will rise, Jade watches as, as the small town she knows and loves begins to head towards catastrophe as yachts compete with canoes and the celebrity rich change the landscape of what was designated park lands to develop what they call Terra Nova. So uh, this one seems like it will be um, very interesting just in general, um, not only because it's a uh, kind of a slasher book but also because it sounds like it's um, taking some important topics that are happening within uh, US and Canada, uh, constant problematic things that happen within the US and Canada in which um, treaties are broken and land gets turned into um, tourism spots or developed when they're not supposed to be. So. I'm very interested in reading this. Question 5 is my biggest disappointment for 2021 and for this I will have to go with Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. I read this one at the beginning of the year and um, had really enjoyed it for the most part for the first half of the book. I really enjoyed the story storytelling within the book and like was definitely rooting for Laszlo to kind of like prove everyone wrong. Um, and glad he did for the most part, but I hated that ending. Um, did not enjoy it. It basically took everything out for me. It felt very insta lovey. It also, like, um, it was just not something that I cared for and was hoping it wasn't going towards despite signs. <laughs> so I was just ultimately really disappointed and it was to the point where I don't even care about the sequel. Um, so I know this is a much beloved series on booktube. I, it just was not for me. So if this is one of your favorite books, like good on you. It just wasn't for me at all. Question six is my biggest surprise and I'd have to go with The Bride Test by Helen Wong. Like I said, romance doesn't typically um, <laughs> resonate with me but this one really did so I was pleasantly surprised by it. I'd also have to say Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. I don't know why I was so nervous going into this. I was very hesitant um, probably because like this has really been like a hit or miss with people because of some of its content. Um, 
but for some reason like its content wasn't so much worrying me it was like the dark academia aspect like I don't know why that makes me so hesitant to read it um but after reading it I actually really enjoyed it um I mean it wasn't like my all-time favorite or anything I still I have I can see where people are coming from when it comes to some of the content warnings in here um however but I also didn't fully enjoy Alex as a main character and <laughs> so um, there were just some issues I had with her but otherwise like I really enjoyed like the magical aspect of this and like really enjoyed the dark academia aspect of this considering I work at a university um this actually like really made me miss being on campus <laughs> despite it like I mean we're not Ivy League but like it was still really fun so I'm definitely going to be moving on to the sequel when it eventually comes out, but yeah, this one surprised me as well. Question 7 is favorite new author or debut, a debut or new to you? This, um, I hesitate to say like favorite just because I haven't read any for more of her books, but I'm going to say Robin Wall Kimmerer just because I enjoyed Braiding Sweetgrass so much and hope to read more of her books. Uh, I recently got um, her first book she published, which was Gathering Moss, to see if she's gonna quickly become one of my favorite authors or not. I typically like to read at least two to three um, books by authors before they actually become like an auto buy or favorite author to me. Uh, question eight is newest fictional crush. I typically don't have these, um, but <laughs> I have two answers for this. Um, at least I don't know if it's necessarily like a crush or just like I wanted more information about them. Um, but the first one is Blue from A Close and Common Orbit. I definitely kind of wanted to know more of his background. Like I understand we got snippets a lot of it and we can kind of put it together. But just the way he takes care of Pepper I really enjoyed and how um he was able to distract Sidra and the fact that he's an artist, like, just a little kind of warms my heart. Um, but to know kind of the same, what he and Pepper went through was definitely, um, made my heart break, but at the same time, it's like, I wanted to know more from him. Um, we got a lot from Pepper's point of view, but I really wanted to know, um, Blues. Same goes for Darlington. Um, I really, like, I really enjoyed his chapters in here and was really curious about his history and past and I'm hoping that we kind of get, like, we got, like I said, we got more, or well, we got bits and pieces, but it's like, I wanted more from his perspective. I wanted to hear more from him, really. So I'm hoping that we get some of the questions that were kind of left unanswered within the next in the series. Whether or not those are considered like crushes or just in general like overall curiosity of just like wanting more develop character development within those two particular characters. The next question is my newest favorite character. Um, <laughs> I really enjoyed Kizzy. Um, and Jinx as like a character duo because they kind of had like antics um, and banter with each other that I really enjoyed. They were also very techy, um, but they all were also both their own individuals, but they just complemented each other really well, which I enjoyed. Um, Sissix was another one that I <laughs> also enjoyed from this book. She was definitely almost like a mother hen type uh, character despite being a reptile reptilian um, but it was a different I what I really enjoyed about this book was that it made me think differently of just kind of like because we have these different um, not only just diverse characters but it was like diverse species these alien species that had different cultural uh, differences than humans so learning statistics um, species and their some of their routine not routines but their some of their their cultural aspects was really interesting or societal aspects was really interesting um, and she was just a very in-depth character and really enjoyed her um, so yeah I would definitely say 
<laughs> half of the uh, Wayfair team. <laughs> Next question is a book that made you cry. There were definitely aspects in here that I was just like, that like broke my heart. Next is a book that made me happy and yeah, I... <laughs> Dr. Chef. I loved Dr. Chef. Um, this should actually be one of my favorite characters as well. Um, I love Dr. Chef's history. They're explaining their species. Um, but they're overall, like, they're definitely more like the mother hen type to, because, um, not only are they the wayfarer's cook, but they are the wayfarer's doctor. Um, I just overall enjoyed it. And of course, like, the interesting way that, uh, their voice was described was really cool so that ultimately made me really happy about dr chef in general was like was just a sweet bean i love them <laughs> next is the most beautiful book you've bought so far this year or have received and again i have two for this and the first is going to be the forest of stolen girls by june her i absolutely enjoy this cover it is so detailed complex and striking um yeah just absolutely love it and of course my main thing is the play between the illustrations and the fonts so definitely enjoy this cover next cover because uh, of course I had to choose two um I enjoy for a whole like similar reasons and that it is very striking. Um, this is for The Wolf by Hannah Whitten. This is re a recent release that I need to get to as well. But it's like the, uh, there's like a text, this has a different texture than most books. Um, of course it's paperback, but it also, it has like a sturdier, um, uh, the texture is definitely different. It feels like watercolor paper which I really enjoy considering like it looks like watercolor um but I also enjoy the contrast to everything it's really really pretty so the next book feels like a silly question because it's what books do you need to read by the end of the year all all of them the next question is what's your favorite book to movie adaptation you've seen this year um so we did end up watching The Hobbit earlier this year and I actually really enjoyed it. That's probably the only book to movie adaptation that I've seen so far. I was a little disappointed just because I don't think it should have been a trilogy but I don't understand like I don't know how it could have been compacted into a duology in terms of series. Smaug versus um that city was like a little underwhelming <laughs> when it's such a huge portion of the book. Um, but I did, I loved being back into, uh, Middle Earth. I, I totally enjoy that, like, being immersed in that once again. In fact, like, Brad and I have been debating on even, like, re-watching all of them again. <laughs> but I've only read The Hobbit so far, so, and I love the book and have been, had tried to get Brad to read it and it didn't work, but... He enjoyed the movies. He liked being liked the aspect as well. All right, and that was the end. Uh, not the, the mid-year book breakout tag. If you made it this far, be sure to give it this video a thumbs up. If you haven't yet done so, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon to get notified when I post more content. Um, be sure to check out my. Uh, raise awareness links down in the description down below. Research, share, donate where you can if possible. I would very much appreciate it. Uh, otherwise, I will see you in a video very soon and I hope that you are in the mental mindset to enjoy your reading. Chew.